Hey, welcome to a new video. Here I'm going to be making a pretty simple electromagnet using some pretty common household items. So let's get right into the video. So what you'll need for this is a relatively long thin wire that is insulated but has stripped ends, a long thin bit of iron or steel which is mostly iron, a battery of some kind, and some electrical tape. The last being not 100% necessary but I would definitely recommend it. So let's begin. Start by laying the wire perpendicular to the piece of metal, leaving a few inches on the end so you can attach it to the battery once you're done. Then simply wrap the wire around the piece of metal as many times as you can, making the spirals as tight together as you can, even though I'm not doing a great job here. But then keep going until you have, again, just a few inches left at the end so you have the equal amount hanging off of both ends. This is on a pretty small scale, but just like that. And it should fit onto the battery like that. So to add the electromagnet onto the battery, all you have to do is just add some electrical tape and tape the open end of the wire to one end of the battery, and then do the exact same thing for the other end of the wire and the other end of the battery. And once you're done with that, it should look something like this. And you can see that now it's fully put together, it should act like any other magnet does. Paper clips and things like that should stick right to the end. Because now, it is a magnet. However, as you can probably tell, it's not exactly the strongest magnet in the world. But I aim to change that. Even when using the same battery, if you use way more wire and a much larger piece of iron, you can get a way stronger magnet. So for version 2.0, I used a piece of wire almost 8 feet long. And for the metal, I used a drill bit that's almost a foot long, about the same as the actual wire was for the first one. And of course, way bigger than the nail. And for the efficiency of the magnet, you want to wrap the wire as many times around the piece of metal as you can. So for me, I wrapped the wire around relatively loosely, and then periodically pushed it to the edge to get as tight wrappings as possible. So that way, I could wrap almost the entire length of that wire to the drill bit. So an easy way of doing so was just to tape one end of the wire to the drill bit, and then you can spin the drill bit in your hand and the wire will wrap around itself, as you can see here. And if you're wondering, no, you shouldn't just plug this straight into the wall, for several reasons. Number one, being that's dumb, that's a lot of electricity and you could die. Number two, being that the breaker would probably pop and it just wouldn't do anything. And number three, it is what is known as alternating current, or AC, and that would change the polarity of the magnets like 60 times a second or 60 hertz, and it just wouldn't work because it needs to be going all the same direction, which is the point of having it wrap around all the same direction. So this magnet needs DC, but that's kind of not related, I was just going off on a bit of a tangent. So anyway, as you can see, by this point the drill bit had been completely wrapped around by the wire, and I just cut off a little bit of extra from the end. So now all that's left to do is to put some electrical tape on the end of each wire, and then tape it onto the respective ends of the D battery so that it can properly conduct. But make sure to be really careful with this part so you don't shock yourself. Of course it's just a little battery, so it's nothing really harmful, but it can still definitely give you a shock. And you can see here that, although it's still of course not a super magnet or anything like that, it's still definitely much stronger than the previous one was, and can hold up multiple different little paper clips and things like that at the same time. So now let's talk a bit about how and why this works. One way to make this magnet stronger would be to use something like a 9 volt battery instead of the D battery that I used. But there are a few other factors involved as well. For example, the more coils there are around the piece of metal, the stronger the magnet will be, as it allows the electricity to travel around it many more times. And that's why, for the second one at least, I tried to make the coils as tight together as I could. And I used a longer piece of metal to get as many coils in as I could. And the material of that piece of metal is important as well. Iron, being ferromagnetic, is a good material for this use, and that's why I used it. Iron is very conductive to a magnetic field and very permeable. Permeable, in this case, simply meaning that it can support a magnetic field. So why this piece of iron becomes a magnet in the first place is due to it, of course, being made of atoms, like everything is. The atoms in the metal core are just sort of randomly around, though. They're not really pointing in any particular direction. 
However, when electric current is introduced to that piece of metal, the atoms can sort of shift around until they're all pointing in the same direction, which basically allows it to become a magnet. The magnetic field caused by the electrical current is able to permeate the iron rod and rearrange the atoms inside it, which is what causes that. And when these atoms are in alignment with each other, the magnetic field is able to grow. So by controlling the flow of the current, you can essentially control the strength of the magnet and also turn it on and off. There will be a limiting point, of course, when adding more current won't increase the magnetism anymore, but this is on a pretty small scale, so we don't really have to worry about that. And when the current is turned off, the atoms will go back to their sort of random arrangement. That arrangement being natural to those atoms, since they only shifted to be in alignment with each other when the electric current was applied. And any permanent magnet is simply a piece of metal or something like that, where the atoms are normally in alignment with each other, so you don't have to apply electricity or anything like that to make them work. And that is also why permanent magnets can sometimes lose their magnetism from just being dropped on the floor, since the atoms can be knocked loose, sort of. And also why you can re-magnetize it by simply rubbing it against another magnet. And of course, there is a ton more to electromagnetism that I haven't mentioned here, but I think you get the general gist of it. So, this was a pretty simple video, pretty reminiscent of a project I did back in middle school. But that is all for this video at least. So I very much hope you enjoyed it, and bye.